All right, welcome back guys to the Dev Marketer channel. I'm your host, J.A. Curtis. You guys can call me Alex. And in this video, we are going to be moving on to part four of our getting, getting started with Git series, all right? All about the basics of getting started with Git. All right, so we've been learning about how to add files, how to track files with Git. It all seems really easy. One last quick thing before we really start pushing this to a server is there's sometimes gonna be files that you don't actually want to save or submit to a server. Sometimes you wanna keep things private, you wanna keep things on a server, or it's just not necessary to put something on the server. And I'm gonna tell you how you can basically continue to work in Git, but while have, telling Git to ignore certain files so that it doesn't put those onto the wonderful World Wide Web for everyone to see. All right, so in this video, we're gonna learn about a file called the git ignore file, and you'll see this a lot. It's just called, we call it the git ignore. Um, now the git ignore is a special file that git recognizes, and in this file, it tells git which files to quite literally ignore. It says, pretend like these never existed. Now you might wonder why would you want to ignore certain files in your project? Well, there are lots of reasons to do it. Um, one of the reasons is basically a file that's not necessary in order to run the application. And a perfect example of this is sometimes on Windows or Mac, we will see these files that really, um, we really just don't um, need um, to be passed in. So a perfect example of this is on Mac, whenever you create like um, some special file structures inside of Mac, there will actually be certain, um, there would be this little file called a DS store. And so here I just wanna show you guys real quick. This is what a DS store file looks like. You can kind of see it here. It'll just be, it's a hidden file. All these period files are hidden files. So it's gonna be a hidden file that exists in our project and it'll call DS store. It's just like a database for the folders. There's a very, very similar one on Windows that's called thumbs.db, I think it is. And um, it's the exact same thing as DS store, but it's the basically the Windows version of that. So let me see if I can find one real quick here. So you might have seen this before, Windows users. It's this little file here, a bunch of gear icons called thumbs or thumbs.db. And it just kind of stores it in there. It just kind of manages how the file structure is inside of there. These are completely unnecessary files. They're just for personal storing, basically, on your own computer. Um, and so we don't need to pass these up into the cloud. We don't need to share these with our current comrades and stuff like that. Um, so anyway, that's one of the that's an example of something we might not need. Another example of something that we may not want to save is something like a .env file. So if we head on over to our Laravel projects, those of you guys that are following along in the Laravel series may know that there's a special little file in here called, um, in fact, I'm gonna open up this whole project in here. Um, there's a file called a .env file, and this .env file has a lot of information about our project locally that we may not want to pass to the entire world. For example, it could have the information for our database, the, including the username and password. It could have um, all sorts of local file information. It could have your database key or your um, app key that is used for um, encoding your sessions and encoding your um, authentication and stuff like that. It could have information to your SMTP server, something you definitely don't want to get out into the real world. Just different things like that that you don't necessarily want to save this on the internet that other people can download and have access to. And so there's certain files that we're gonna say, yeah, just don't don't save these files. These are not something we wanna track, um, we wanna track in our repository. And so an ENV file is a perfect example of this, okay? So um, anyway, how do you tell Git to do that? Well, the perfect way is with a file called a Git ignore file. And you can make this file yourself. A lot of frameworks like Laravel have them built in. Ruby on Rails has one built in. You can see this one that came with Ruby on Rails, which basically said it automatically sets it up to ignore all of these files. Now what this says here is anything in the vendor folder to ignore, anything in the node modules to ignore, ignore all the public storage, uh, basically everything's stored here, ignore that. Part of the reason is because there are file restrictions. If you have like images and actual stuff taking up space and you're stored here, when you upload that to the repository, that can usually put you over your limit because the repositories really expect you to save code, not files. 
Okay, so you might have too big of a file. So anyway, we ignore the public storage. And then like the .env file that we were just talking about, it's telling it to ignore it here. Okay, so how do you make one of these get ignore files and how do you get it to work? Well, let's head on over to our little mini project and we'll see exactly how it works. So let's head on over to our getting started project. And that's the project that we see in here. Well, we can start by just making a file called git ignore. That's all it really takes is it's just a file called git ignore. It's just a basic text file. Now you're not going to see it show up in here because all of these period files are hidden files. So in order to do this, we actually have to open it in Sublime. Let's go ahead and open up this file and we get just a blank file. And this is going to be our text file that tells Git which files to ignore. So we can basically put a line for every single item that we want it to ignore. So if we wanted to ignore those DS store files, you would just do it like this, DS store. Let's say you don't want to store any exe files, you could do this. If you want to um, store anything that is in a directory, you could call it foo slash star. This would ignore that whole directory. In fact, I think this, this will ignore the whole directory. So there's just different things that you can do to ignore certain files in your directory and um, certain folders. And also, if you want to look out on the internet, there are plenty of ways that you can get, get ignore files. Um, and uh, people that will basically help you, you have one already set up if you need. But all it really takes here is you basically need to set it up and have the file saved in there. And then once you have that, then um, when you run your git status, it's going to ask you to commit that file. Go ahead and commit your git ignore file. And once it's committed in the project, then all of the stuff that it's telling you to ignore, git will automatically respect those wishes. So all we need to do is just add those files in. All right, so in fact, actually, I forgot to actually save it. So let's go ahead and just make a change here. Let's go to our git ignore file. We're going to tell it to ignore uh, called file.txt. Okay, so it's going to be telling it to ignore file.txt. Let me now go and we're going to make a new file called file.txt. File.txt, save that file there. And now let's go ahead and just add something to this. Okay, so I saved the file, so now file.txt is in there. Let's go ahead and close this and run a git status. And now you can see that even though file.txt, oops, now that file.txt is in the project, um, git automatically recognizes that git ignore didn't want us tracking that, and, and so it doesn't put file.txt in the directory as something that we need to add. Okay, but it does recognize that there have been changes to the git ignore. Just to kind of hit this home, let's go ahead and work on the sublime again. And now let's change this to file1.txt so it doesn't match, okay? Let's come back over here. We're gonna run our git status again. And now you can see that because we got rid of that file out of our git ignore, obviously it still notices that there's changes in the git ignore to submit, but you can see now it wants to add this file.txt because it doesn't find it as something that it should ignore in the git ignore file, okay? So by just adding this back in, what we can do is we can, and let me run git status again. I know I've done this before, I'm just hitting it home. Now the git status, which started up here, it only wants the changes to the git ignore and not necessarily to that file.txt. So now when I do git add, it's not gonna add that, that file.txt in there. Um, and we'll be set, okay? So this is a good way basically to protect those .env files and all that kind of stuff. I do want to point you over and I'm going to link this down in the description, but there is something on GitHub that has a whole bunch. This is actually made by GitHub itself. This is GitHub's own repository. And GitHub has provided Git ignore files for almost every major framework or whatever that you have. So you can see here, Jekyll, Je Jekyll Joomla, um, Lemon Stand. I mean, it's got every single one in here. Um, Magento, OpenCart. Um, if we move down here, there's our Rails one, there's probably a Laravel one, do, 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 do. here's Laravel. And if you look inside of here, you can see that they've created suggestions, and these are community driven, you can see seven people have com contributed to this, suggestions on what you don't need to put inside of your 
Git repositories. And so they've created their own Git ignore file that you can use. So anyway, this is just something to keep in mind. The idea of a Git ignore, you don't need to store everything inside of your Git repository. There are some things you don't need to do. I'm going to go ahead and link this down in the description. This, um, uh, this repository, it's just basically github.com slash github slash git ignore. Um, this is a project developed by GitHub themselves and it's called the Git ignore project. And it basically just has a whole bunch of useful Git ignore templates that you can copy and paste and use inside of your own directories. Or of course, you know how to make them yourselves. Just make a blank file called dot Git ignore and Git will automatically recognize that um, as a Git file, a Git ignore file inside of a Git repository. It automatically recognizes it and starts using it right away and ignoring all of the files that you put inside of that um, Git ignore template. Okay. So take a look at these. If you guys are more interested in the Git ignore in the next video, it's time to actually push our files to a repository. So that's what we're going to be doing now is pushing up to GitHub and I'll be showing you guys how to do that. That'll be a fun video. I'll see